So I'm I was studying uh, subnet and uh, subnet masks and DHCP for the A plus two twenty eight two twenty eight oh one test and I'm getting ready for that. Um Lord Lord willing in a week or so I'll uh be ready for that, which will be a great thing. And I hope all of you are studying too as well. Uh I think the best place to go for the test is uh freeaplus.com. Uh great videos, great teacher. He's been a teacher for a long time. And this is kind of just self study for myself and review for myself to help me learn and uh maybe to add on a little information for other people as well. <coughs> um so in subnet masks and DHCP, um they talked about uh gateways um combine either hardware and or software are used to allow communication between dissimilar networks. Um, different examples for gateways are firewalls, email, internet, local area networks or LANs, uh, voice and data. Um, for the gateway, uh, such as firewalls, <coughs> they control traffic entering or leaving networks. Um, and that's pretty much what a gateway really does for anything that's controlling traffic. Um, but for email, it translates and exchanges mail uh, between different email uh, systems. Um, internet uh, controls communication between in between networks uh, and the internet. And a local area network uh, typically would use a router, um, which is the the hardware uh, gateway <coughs> um, for a LAN. Um, in a network, so routing stuff uh, throughout networks. Um, voice and data, um, and they talked about the voice and data uh, being separate information, um, <coughs> would translate, uh, the voice would translate and compress voice signals for data networks. <coughs> um, so gateways may link uh, subnets with a single network. Um, so it says subnet max of a default class. Okay, so they went into next uh, talking about the subnet masks and subnets, the different classes, class A, B, and C uh, is what you have to be concerned for for the uh, 220801 test and A+. Um, you won't have to worry about uh, class D or E. Those are reserved or experimental classes. And so the class looking here at the 255 uh, portion, portion of the subnet mask indicates the uh, network and the dot zero um, indicates the host part of the uh, subnet mask. Um, so it helps identify there. Uh, three methods of configuring IP addresses on hosts are static, dynamic, and self-assigned. And so they go through uh, dynamic IP versus static IP here. Static IP addressing is for one customer on one IP address, and dynamic IP addressing assigns a different IP address each time the ISP or internet service provider customer logs onto their computer. But this is dependent upon the internet service provider or ISP because some ISPs only change the IP address as they deem it necessary. Um, so for a dynamic versus static, uh, your dynamic address can keep changing and your static is permanent. Um, there's also uh, self-assigned, you're assigning yourself a IP address. Um, next, going on from there, <coughs> went over uh, FQDN and fully qualified domain names are names like google.com, uh, yahoo.com, facebook.com. Those are FQDNs. And the FQDN you type in because that's the names that we use. But the um, that gets sent out to a DNS. Um, and a DNS is a domain name domain name server and it has all these names on the server 
and it uses the FQDN and finds the IP address that matches that FQDN. Because uh, the internet is a bunch of IP addresses. You could just type in the IP address if you knew it, like 198.2.56, whatever, dot 8 or something, you know, if that was in. Uh, well, let's take a look here. We can go to. Uh, what? Um, I think Google has a few IP addresses, but what is uh, Google's IP? And it'll tell you. Um, Google, what is Google um, dot com IP address? Here we go. That'll work a little better, I think. Uh, so you can see all the different IP addresses there. Uh, ranges belong to Google. Um, Sometimes when I type it into Google or on the on the search, it actually tell you the IP address for Google, um, like just a common one, I guess. But you can put in uh, one of the IP addresses, and it should take you to Google.com. Um, so, well, that's it for that. Uh, you can just work on that some more yourself if you want. Um, so going on from there, when uh, that talked about DHCP um, was created to replace something called boot P. Uh, using boot P, administrators needed to maintain tables of IP addresses and MAC addresses on boot P servers. Um, so DHCP uh, was created to replace that. Uh, why? Well, DHCP enables each network device to borrow or release an IP address. Um, DHCP helped, one, to reduce time and management requirements uh, since it was automatic, um, two, a reduction in errors, um, and three, greater user mobility, and four, uh, transparent mobile addressing for mobile users. Um, and we'll look here, let's see. DNS. So the uh, DHCP servers here need to uh, find, configure, time, and IP addresses. Okay, so client and user lease steps. Um, so when you have uh, your DHCP client, it'll uh, see the server and it'll request uh, IP lease requests get sent out, right? Number one. Well, number one is uh, DHCP is discovered, okay? Um, uh, then the uh, DHCP is offered. Um, so you have an offer on there, weeks acknowledgement, um, update host name, uh, update a uh, point, pointer PTR name. Um, so it's a little different on this, I guess what they're showing here, processes of DHCP. But for a client and user lease steps, um, so if you're the client or, or you're, you're the user, or is it, uh, sometimes are the client, huh? Um, the four steps would be uh, DHCP would be discovered on your computer, um, and then the DHCP uh, offers um, an IP address and uh, there's a request sent out, step 3 and DHCP acknowledgement is step 4 um, they also talked about APIPA a -P -I -P -A, uh, self assigns its own address until a DHCP address is used or servers found um, so then it would just drop the APIPA address um, but you can use APIPA just in your home um, on yourself, uh, maybe attached to other computers, but DHCP is most likely used. Um, I had up uh, another picture here when I was talking about uh, FQDN, fully qual qualified domain names or DNS, and this had the steps for 
um, how how your thing is found. So you see here, I need directions to HowStuffWorks.com, and that's your FQD in HowStuffWorks.com. And then it goes off to the DNS server, and then it says, "Hey, I um, what does it say here? The domain name uh, HowStuffWorks.com is not in my database or cache. I'll try another DNS server." So it goes. It just goes until it finds it. And then the DNS server says, I found the IP address. And then it uh, sends it back to you and sends you to that website. So we'll just keep studying for A. And like I said, freeaplus.com is one of the greatest places to go. So, all right, thank you. <coughs>